thank you all for coming here. Um, it's not a good reason for you guys to get out and travel long distance, but hopefully we're going to be able to provide you some information that'll help you make a good informed decision on how to proceed with this wheat crop. So just a show of hands, how many people think they lost or substantially had a damage to the wheat crop, 24 degrees or less? Not as many as I thought. How many, uh, I talked to someone that said the Logan or Simpson County got down to 16 degrees. That's pretty scary if you're trying to get this to go on through. So I don't know between what we're going to do, and I got to stay right here. I'm sorry, I'm not used to staying put. But um, we're going to try to give you some information. We're going to hit uh, some burn down options if that's where it goes to. We're going to try to help you guys learn how to dissect wheat if you don't know. I've never had to do that myself. It's a little bit trickier than I thought. Jesse, wherever he is in the room, he always takes care of that for me. So hats off to Jesse. But Colette, our um, Carrie Knott and uh, Terry, uh, Terry Yielding, I believe, and Brenda Kennedy are going to be helping us with this. That's what the microphones are up here for. And uh, we'll just see what happens. If the weather's uh, favorable and people want to, we actually tried to set up a wheat, well, we did set up a wheat field school for small hands-on training. Little did we know it would be ideal for a situation like this. So um, what we'll try to do after the link session's over and after we're finished dissecting, if people are interested, we can go across the road and look at some of our wheat. So that's the plans for now, and I'm about out of things to say. So, Kelsey, where are we? We're getting there. <laughs> All right. Can you advance the slides for me, please? Yes. Oh. Okay, just first a uh, few housekeeping items. Um, we do not, <laughs> we did not apply for CCA credits. This was not about getting you guys CCA credits. This was about getting information. However, we're going to apply for them after the fact. So if you are a CCA and you do want credits, sign in. We aren't guaranteeing anything. We don't know how many we'll get or what category, but we are going to apply for them retroactively. So hopefully we can get to agree with the CCA CEUs for you. Um, for those attending by Zoom, uh, please mute your microphones and stop video. And then in the bottom, there's a chat box. If you if you're attending by Zoom, you can enter your question in there while the speakers are um, talking. Kelsey or I will be monitoring that and we'll try to chime in. If not, Wait for the end, um, and we'll have a QA session, and we'll make that as long as it needs to be. Um, we'll try to stay around as long as possible and answer all the questions. So go to the next one, Kelsey. Oh, you can do this. So for those on Zoom, here is the mute button on the bottom left. The start video button on the bottom left, both of those should be clicked so they're not active. And then the chat box kind of on the bottom, a little bit off to the right on the middle. So if you can do that, that will help us on our end. And remember, uh, you can answer any or ask any questions like that. We'll have someone monitoring that. Uh, I got the next one. So what we're trying to do here, it was short, short turnaround, but we're just trying to hopefully give you some advice or give you some knowledge to know how to best proceed with this wheat crop. Um, there's going to be several different methods. Carrie is going to show you how to dissect. Um, so we're, going to, we're going to try to address all the questions. There's a bunch of knowledge in here. Lloyd Murdoch's been through this several times. John Grove has as well. Um, a, lot of, a lot of good information hopefully will come from this. Probably, I see several wheat samples on the table. That might be why the majority of the people are here to help evaluate what you have. Typically, about as quick as it can be is four days after you 
You see for free before you can see damage. Seven to ten days, you're more likely to see it. So just because it might not show damage right now, if it's a short time frame, it might not be that there's no damage. We, we, we don't know that, but we're going to try to at least show you how to do that. And this one here in bold, we are not insurance adjusters. This is our disclaimer. Uh, I'm sure there's a few adjusters in here, but whatever you do before you decide to go one way or the other with the prop, it's probably best to chat with your adjuster before, before proceeding. Um, just a little background, kind of reminiscent. I was working in tobacco in 2007, but I remember the trees. Uh, those wheat growers really remember the trees. Got involved with an email chain between Dave and Sanford and several others. And here's some stats that he pulled up. The 2000 wheat yield was 27% lower than the average of the 2006 and 2008 yields. That was from the National Ag Statistics Service. That's what was reported. However, the caveat to that was a lot of the ones that were severely damaged were terminated and not taken to yield. So if they would have kept everything, well, I'd say it would have been much more than 27% lower. This is some data that Bill Bruning compiled from the wheat variety trials from the 2007 trees. So on the far left column is the location of that variety trial, the middle column was the yield for 2007, and then the right column was the previous year's yield in that same location. So in Fulton County, 22 bushel yield versus 98 in 2006. In Princeton, 40 versus 93. Webster, 60 versus 96. Lexington didn't fare too bad, 80 bushel yield versus 104. And then we have Logan at 55 and 87 and 68 and 95. So one thing this shows is location does matter. So what we're trying to do, if you had a potential of 80 bushel, we don't want you going out there and prematurely pulling the trigger and killing that. Or on the flip side, we don't want you to think, well, I had 98 bushels last year and try to save a crop that's not worth salvaging and end up with 22 bushels. So uh, going forward to the next freeze event, we had 2012 wheat yield. It was only about 13% lower of the yields on the uh, either side of that. So there's other factors that go into this. So again, just trying to provide information so you can make the best management decisions on how to proceed. Don't try to save a crop that's not worth saving. And, um, you know, don't terminate a crop that's not worth terminating. If you can take it out and yield, we want you to have that information. So that's pretty much all I have to say at this point.